this is Lana Kelly and um, on Hudson Valley Art Speak and today we're going to be talking to uh, a multimedia artist, um, Wendy Alvarez. Um, Wendy, thanks for coming today. Happy to be here. And um, we're going to talk a little bit about these incredible um, paintings that, that you're doing. Uh, I, I, I hesitate to even call them yeah. paintings. How would you describe them? I used to think of them as paintings and then I realized there's more than that, the sculpture piece. Um, the sculpture sort of inspires the, the colors and the designs and the painting themselves. So I think of them as mixed media sculptures. Um, and there are different series I've been working on for a while. And uh, I could just do this in the privacy of my studio and never have them look at the, see the light of day. I just <laughs> enjoy making them so much. So these, and, and what is, um, these are queen palms? Is that they're, what they are? They're made on the leaf bases of the queen palm trees. The fronds kind of grow out of these very sturdy um, bases. And when the palms dry up and fall off, the bases are left and eventually they come off or if they're in a nursery they're they're cleaned up and taken down but they're very sturdy and the form just is so beautiful to me that it kind of has inspired this incredible series that mm -hmm. I've been doing for the last three years. It really lends itself to the heads of state mm -hmm. um, and what 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 inspired that? The um, I mean, the very mask-like. Yeah. Well, the first association I had to the form was that they were mask-like. So, uh, the first one I did was this one, and um, I like to use a lot of other materials other than paint. But the heads of state are all very different, and all kind of represent these very kind of essential tribal energies. Mm -hmm. So, I have a series of about. 20, 24 of them, and uh, I try to create different colors and designs and try to use designs from different cultures, a lot of Native American, mm -hmm. Aboriginal, some African design patterns, and uh, use a lot of different materials with them as well to create different textures. And, and are, are they all um, actual sculptures as opposed to masks that somebody might wear in a performance? Well, I actually got an email from someone very interested in knowing whether they could be worn. They're very heavy. Uh -huh. um, there are no eye holes in them, so it'd be kind of difficult to use them as a mask. But um, I see them more as decorative than I do as sort of useful masks. But if, if somebody was doing a theater piece and mm -hmm. asked you to create a series of masks that could be worn, would that be something you could do with this? Uh, I think they'd be a bit heavy. Uh -huh. I would like to, unless they carry them, you know, in front of their faces rather than yeah. keep them over their uh -huh. faces. Yeah, uh -huh. it could be done, I suppose. Yeah. So where do you get these, uh, I, th this <laughs> palm? <laughs> <laughs> They're not from my backyard. Yeah. I get them from a nursery in California. Um, originally, I went online. Originally, I found a different species of palm when I was visiting some family members in Arizona. Mm -hmm. They had blown off the night before. I was taking an, a morning walk and found these shapes on the ground, these beautiful forms, but they didn't resemble these at all. It's from a, another species. But I brought them home and my brother packaged them up and sent them back to me in New uh -huh. York. And I used those. There were just a very, like four of them. So after I retired, I started playing with them and then I ran out of them. and started looking online for nurseries and I found this great place in California and the guy sent me photos of the kinds of species he had and right away I uh -huh. focused in on the queen palm. So I've, I've never seen um, these used for, uh, for artwork. Are, are there other people who are doing this or are you just kind of in a niche by yourself right now? On the East Coast, I think I'm <laughs> definitely in a niche by myself. But I think there are other artists out West. I've been online and I've seen a few other people who are using them. Mm -hmm. And what kind of paint do you use on them? These are all acrylic. Um, I do use paint pens also with oil-based paint. Um, I use metal and um, occasionally feathers, beads, yarn. Yeah. Well, the feathers kind of leads us into your next series, which yeah. is the <laughs> aviary series. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, those are it's my greatest love of birds. So I've done a whole series called aviaries. and. Um, 
they're all different birds. I mix them up a little bit. Some are very abstracted and some are a little bit more realistic. And I started with the aviary series. I started creating my own papers on canvas paper and tearing them and using them in different kinds of um, patterns to uh, create branches or just uh, differences in grounds between background and middle ground. And oh, I see. Yeah, I can that's see all on, on this one here. Green that stripes yeah, are all yeah, papers. Yeah, yeah. 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 So did you, what kind of paper are you using for that? It's canvas paper. Mm -hmm. It's very thick. It has a nice tooth to it, a nice texture. And I just play with paints and use texturing tools to do patterning on my paints. And then I tear them up. So that's how I get those yeah. stripes. And do you, are on the, on the aviary series, are these native birds or are they just uh, imagine they're and from out of everywhere. your imagination. <laughs> they're from everywhere. I have a lot of bird books at home, bird identification books. Um, I'm fascinated with birds of prey, so I've done quite a few owls and red-tailed mm -hmm. hawks. But I also love the shapes of songbirds. I think they're so compact, and uh -huh. I just love the the beauty of the shape. So those are bohemian wax wings up there. They're found in the northern states. Uh -huh. We don't see them around here. Um, here are just some songbirds with with a hawk or two. I think there's one on the uh, other side. Yeah, there's one on my side yeah. too. Um, and I just like the shapes and the colors that I can play with. Mm -hmm. Now, how long have you been? Uh, what? Um, where could people see your work? Well, I'm a member of the Katona Museum Artists Association. So when they have shows, I always have things in their shows. Um, I'm a member of Arts on the Lake in Kent and I show twice a year in their member shows um, and Putnam Arts Council. Mm -hmm. I currently have a piece in their member show right now. Where is their uh, gallery? Putnam Arts Council is off of six, uh, Route 6 in Mayapack. It's on, oh gosh, I can't remember. It's across from the library. If you take a left at the library, go up that road till mm -hmm. it ends and mm -hmm. take a right, it's on the left. It's at the Belle Levine Art Center. Okay, I thought they had moved to Tilly Foster Farm, they had, but they're not after there. They the fire. The fi they restored the building uh -huh. and they're back in their original building now. Yeah. The Arts on the Lake is a pretty interesting place. Yeah. That, mm -hmm. um, that was a firehouse mm -hmm. and um, artists have turned it into, a, is, is it a cooperative gallery? It's a and vital community center. Uh -huh. It's got theater productions, concerts, uh, there are art shows there, there are classes that take place there. Um, what they've done with that building is just remarkable. Um, and once they had it established, artists from all over just came out of the woodwork. I mean, people really, really were craving a place uh -huh. to meet and to show. And um, it's just a really vital center right now for mm -hmm. the arts. Mm -hmm. And about how many members are there? Oh, I wish I could tell you. I have. I really don't know. Yeah. Um, the artists. I have uh, maybe. I have no clue. I would have to <laughs> check with people there. Yeah, that there seems, just seems to have grown. So it has. It's, um, and you've renovated it, and mm -hmm. it looks great. It, I beautiful. haven't been inside since uh, it renovated, but it's beautiful on the outside. The view is beautiful. The back is just all windowed, and you can look out on the lake. Mm -hmm. It's really a spectacular setting. And is that a nonprofit organization? Yes. It is. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, Wendy, um, where else can people see your work? Do you have a you have a website? I have a website. Uh -huh. I do have a piece at Putnam Arts Council. Um, there are shows coming up that. Hopefully, you know, I don't know whether I'm in or not, but yeah. there are quite a few things coming mm -hmm. up in the future. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, where do you see the, uh, what direction are you moving in? Are you? Um, <clears throat> well, I, I may always go back to some more of these tribal masks or some more birds, but I'm currently working on my third series, which is called Autonomies. And I'm just using and celebrating the, the palm and playing with the, the form and using colors and glazing and my papers also I'm mm -hmm. using on those. And I've just started the third series and I'm very excited about where that's going. Yeah, so um, do you hope to be able to show that soon or oh, are you just not sure. ready for it to, no, there, to make that step? No, beginning to <clears throat> see the light of day, mm -hmm. but I, I have about seven pieces right now. And, uh -huh. Um, I have a lot of palm at home that I haven't used yet, <laughs> so there's a lot more going to happen. Yeah. Have you ever uh, worked on things like b bark or, or birch or...? Never used any deciduous trees at uh -huh. all, so uh, this is just, this just popped up and um, yeah. 
I'm just having the time of my life. The, the actual surface of the palm is very smooth. Um, when I get it from the nursery in California, I have to, it has kind of like a fuzz on it. It's uh -huh. hard to explain, but I have to scrape it and clean it and wash it, and then, of course, you have to prime it. But um, it's a process. But the surface itself is actually quite smooth and takes anything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That surprises me because I, I, I would have thought it would be rougher. No. And uh, no. you'd be smoothing it down so that it wasn't so rough. No, it's actually quite lovely. Yeah, it's yeah. Pretty. And, and what about, um, do you have to coat these or how do you preserve the uh, palm? I put, um, well, I first I prime and then I do my work and then I, these all have a layer of, um, medium on it. Uh, some are very glossy. Um, others, I've done some of the autonomy pieces using both gloss and matte medium. Um, Mixed to, together on no, the same? No, just on the same piece uh -huh. side by side to uh -huh. give part a very shiny appearance and the other a very flat appearance. And mm -hmm. I'm just playing now with yeah. the form. Yeah. I bet that adds a lot of dimension to it. It does. And that's why I'm celebrating the form so much. And there's so much that I can learn about how to work with this kind of mm -hmm. three-dimensionality, mm -hmm. this element. Yeah. And um, with the new pieces, are you also incorporating other things like the metals or feathers or <coughs> things like that? I have started some work with metal. Um, I'm using a lot of my papers. I don't know about the feathers at this point. I'm not quite sure what I can do with them with the autonomy pieces, yeah. but I'm always ready to go back into my first two series and play some more with those. So um, after a, a career teaching art, yeah. y you're kind of taking off on, on a, a second career in art. It was a long time teaching. Yeah. And as we discussed earlier, I had no time for my own work when I was teaching. Even summers, you think, oh, two months. I'm uh -huh. gonna be. But by the time I decompressed from the end of the year <laughs> with doing orders for the following year and doing report cards for 400 kids and yeah. <clears throat> cleaning my room and packing everything up. It would take three weeks just to decompress from that. And then by early August, I'd start thinking about going back to school again. Yeah. So there was very little time or concentration to develop any kind of cohesive body of work. Um, when I retired, all of a sudden, it was like the lid popped up. And yeah. just, all these ideas just started coming out. So, yeah. um, And then the palm was just so inspiring for me. I just. Um, really took to the form yeah. and once I discovered this form I haven't had any time to do anything else. You haven't looked seems. back uh, at all, no, huh? No. Yeah. Well, our time is just about uh -huh. up so I just want to remind everybody that they can uh, go to Wendy's website to see uh, more examples of mm -hmm. her work and the, mm -hmm. the three series that she's working on right now and um, also try to stop in and um, see her pieces when there's a show at Art on the Lakes mm -hmm. and, and um, at the Arts Council. So thanks, Wendy, for coming Thank today. You. I really appreciate fun. this. Thank this you so is much, great. Lana. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good.